Scientists may possess more knowledge than the average person on the street, but that doesn't mean they hold all the answers. Even the most knowledgeable experts in the world sometimes find themselves faced with things they can't explain. And those situations arise in the field of archaeology on a regular basis. Perhaps you might be able to explain some of the things that scientists cannot. Take a good, long look at all the strange artifacts in this video, and give us your opinion in the comments. Our first strange artifact is an ancient Roman holy jar. And when we say that it's holy, we don't mean that it's religiously significant. We mean that it's literally full of holes. The jar was pieced back together from 180 fragments it was found in. But even when that painstaking process was completed, it posed more questions than answers. It was discovered in the crater of a World War II bomb in London, England during the 1940s, and was immediately noted as being unique. No Roman artifact that resembles this has been found before or since. Dating it isn't easy, but the best guess of historians is that it was made in the 2nd or 3rd century. Its purpose remains a mystery, but one theory is that this is a glorarium. Back in the 2nd century, dormice were considered delicacies by the Romans. They would be held in containers within the home and fed walnuts and chestnuts until they were fattened up, and then they were cooked and eaten. This jar looks too small to have been used for that purpose, but maybe the Romans weren't overly concerned with animal rights. Whenever scientists are unable to explain the purpose or origin of an ancient artifact, conspiracy theorists will claim that it's extraterrestrial. That's what happened to the so-called Wedge of Aoud, which has been baffling researchers ever since it was discovered in Romania in 1973. The block of carved aluminum was found under more than 30 feet of sand on the banks of the river Mures and surrounded by ancient mastodon bones. The central point of the mystery here is the object's composition. Aluminum wasn't discovered by human beings until the 19th century, and yet this object is 10,000 years old. Even the thick coating of oxide around it has been there for at least 400 years. It's theoretically possible for aluminum to occur naturally, but it requires a heat of at least 1,000 degrees to produce it. Where could that have occurred in the natural world 10,000 years ago? Our inability to explain it has fueled the fires of the alien hunters who believe it's part of a crashed spaceship. But if that's the case, where's the rest of the spaceship? Our next artifact is one of the most famous mysteries in the world. It's the Shroud of Turin. And if you have strong religious convictions, you might believe that this is the piece of fabric in which Jesus Christ was wrapped and entombed following his crucifixion. Millions of people all over the world believe that it's a genuine artifact. But scientific evidence doesn't back up the tale. Radiocarbon dating of the material suggests that it's a late 14th century forgery, but that hasn't stopped it from being venerated by both the Catholic and Anglican churches as a holy sacred object. Even today, it's kept inside the Cathedral of Turin as a religious icon. Numerous attempts to discredit the radiocarbon dating process used on the shroud have been made, but so far, the scientific community has been able to reject all of them with conclusive evidence. The argument has gone on for centuries, and probably won't end anytime soon. We guess the question of whether or not you believe that Christ's body was once inside the shroud is a matter of faith. In 2018, a team of divers and archaeologists finally recovered treasure from the wreck of the Ruzvijik off the south coast of England and yet they still don't know exactly what they found. So thick are the rust concretions that encase the treasures that it's impossible to know what's inside them. They're hoping that a brand new high-tech x-ray project that's due to start later in 2020 might help them to shed some light on the matter. The Dutch ship sank close to Kent's coastline in 1740 and was known to be carrying a heavy load of silver coins, thimbles, and jewelry when it went down. When the x-rays finally clear up the matter of what's under the rust, historians hope that it will confirm a pet theory they have about smuggling. Importing British coins to Batavia, the ship's destination in the East Indies, was illegal at the time of the sinking because it was feared that the currency would destabilize the local economy. Despite that, it's thought that British travelers drilled small holes into their coins 
and then sewed the coins into their clothing to avoid detection. If the holes show up on the x-rays, the theory will be validated. The existence of the Antikythera mechanism isn't disputed. It's a genuine historical artifact, and anybody is welcome to take a look at it. Its purpose, however, is very disputed indeed. The unusual item comes from an ancient Greek shipwreck that had sat at the bottom of the ocean for 2,000 years prior to its discovery. And it's totally unique. No other item like this has been recovered from any other Greek shipwreck, or indeed any other archaeological site in the world. The presence of what might be moving parts on the device has led some scholars to suggest that it might be the earliest ever example of a clockwork object, while others point to the fact that it could seemingly pinpoint the locations of stars and planets in the sky at night, which might even make it the world's first computer. The fact that it comes from inside a shipwreck implies that it was probably a nautical navigational tool of some kind. But why haven't objects like this been found in other shipwrecks? Maybe it was a one-of-a-kind item, and its inventor was lost along with the ship. For many years, there was a debate about whether the Norse coin that was found in Maine, USA during the 1950s was real or fake. We now have 100% confidence that it's a genuine artifact, but we have no idea how it came to be in Maine, or what it might mean for the official history of European settlement in the Americas. For years, it was mistaken for a 12th century English coin, but it's actually a Viking coin from somewhere between the years 1065 and 1093. Its discovery among an ancient fire pit, complete with knives and stone chips, suggests that it was brought to America in ancient times. And so the obvious conclusion to draw is that the Vikings beat Columbus to America by several centuries. There are ancient Icelandic folk stories that describe how, centuries ago, Icelandic people would travel west from the cold of Greenland to another, warmer country, full of grass and grapes. That seems to back up the idea that the penny might be a genuine discovery. And the fact that it's not a match for any other Viking coin collection discovered elsewhere further solidifies the theory that this is the real deal. So much for Columbus. While we're on the topic of discoveries that appear to have no business being in the place they were found, Here's an ancient East Asian bronze belt buckle that turned up in Alaska in 2011. The tiny buckle is barely two inches long and less than an inch thick, and yet it appears to have survived for more than 1,000 years beneath the foundations of an old Inuit dwelling on the Seward Peninsula. With beveling on one side of the object and a concave surface on the other, it's reasonable to assume that this object was created inside a mold. Fortunately, there was still a scrap of leather attached to it when it was found, which allowed for radiocarbon dating to take place and date the buckle to around the 6th century. We describe it as a belt buckle here because that's how the people who found it describe it, but it's just as plausible that it was part of a harness for a horse. This is the first prehistoric cast-made bronze object ever found in Alaska, but it didn't come from Alaska. Bronze metallurgy didn't exist in Alaska during those times. So this somehow arrived from China or Korea. Everybody knows how significant a city Jerusalem was in ancient times, and how significant it still is today. It's one of the oldest cities in the world, and it isn't quite done giving up its ancient mysteries yet. In late 2011, an exploratory dig in the city of David revealed a series of strange symbols carved into the bedrock, and it's thought that they've been there for more than 2,800 years. We don't know who put them there, and we have no idea what they might mean. Perhaps their location is significant. The markings were found during the excavation of what's believed to be a set of fortifications around the Gihon Spring. During times of antiquity, the spring would have been the only natural source of water in the city. Normally, historians can at least hazard a guess at what symbols like this might mean. But this time, they have nothing. They might not even be intended as symbols at all. They're cut so deeply that they could be grooves into which wooden structures would fit. They might even be molds for metalwork. Before we even start talking about our next artifacts, we have to give a disclaimer. There are some people who don't believe that the Dropa stones are real. 
All we can say in response to that is that they exist in several written records, and there's some photographic evidence of their existence. The stones are said to have been found in China's Bayankara Ula Mountains by a Dr. Chi Pu Tai while he was out walking in 1938. At first, the doctor thought he'd found a discarded collection of vinyl records in an unlikely place, but he quickly realized that these bizarre grooved discs were made from stone, not vinyl. Excited by his discovery, Dr. Tai took the discs home to look at them more closely, and that's when he noticed tiny hieroglyphs carved into the grooves of each of the stones. He contacted some of his friends in an attempt to translate them, but they were unable to do so and so he sent them elsewhere in China for further analysis. From there, the stones disappear into thin air. They are referenced in the itinerary of a museum in 1974, but the museum denies ever having them, and they haven't been found anywhere since. Could that be because the hieroglyphs told the story of ancient aliens visiting Earth? Conspiracy theorists certainly think so. There's nothing unusual about most ancient maps. Maps have been around for as long as navigation and seafaring have existed, and most of them are boring. The Piri Reis map, however, is anything but dull, named after its owner who was a famous admiral of the Turkish navy during the 16th century. The map appears to contain knowledge of the continents that was impossible for the people of his time to know. To be more specific, the coastline of Antarctica appears on the map, drawn in great detail. There's no way it could be mistaken for anything else. The position of South America on the map means that the landmass indicated on the chart has to be Antarctica, and yet it can't be. History tells us that nobody knew Antarctica had existed until its official discovery during the 19th century. Piri Reis drew up this map in the year 1513, and we know that because he kindly dated it for us. As if that wasn't strange enough, the map also appears to show Antarctica without ice. Did Piri Reis ever land on it? Even if he didn't, how could he have known it was there? It would be inaccurate to say that every civilization that's ever lived on the land we know as China was Chinese. Many different civilizations and cultures have called the country home over the centuries, and the San Xing Dui is the most mysterious of all of them. These days, San Xing Dui is little more than a quiet village in China's Sichuan province. 5,000 years ago, though, it was the center of a civilization that possessed masses of jade, gold, bronze, and other precious materials, along with the artistic skill to create unique works of jewelry and strange tribal masks. Their existence can be traced from around the year 3000 BCE to 1000 BCE, and then they abruptly vanish. Nobody knows what happened to them or why their disappearance was so sudden. Perhaps what's more amazing than that is the fact that we didn't know about their existence at all until a farmer digging a well came across a stash of jade Sang Dui artifacts in 1929. Further excavation work revealed a treasure trove of objects buried in two bits, including a bizarre statue of a human figure made from bronze and standing eight feet tall. Who were these people? And why were they confined to such a small geographical area? The only thing we can say with any confidence about Scotland's famous Cochno Stone is that it's a brilliant work of Neolithic art. Other than that, almost everything is guesswork. The huge stone, marked with rings and cups, was first discovered in 1887 and became a popular tourist attraction, but had to be reburied in 1965 because the markings on the 40-foot-long rock were being worn away by people standing on them. Ideally, we'd like to be able to re-examine the rock using modern technology to find out more about it, but that would involve digging it up again, and Scottish authorities rarely grant permission for that to be done. Aside from the rings and cups, there are a few crosses, and then a drawing of a pair of four-toed feet. Strange as it might sound, monuments similar to this one have been discovered elsewhere in Europe, and are thought to have been created about 4,000 years ago. We don't know who made them nor do we understand the significance of the markings. Perhaps they're of no more significance than a child's game of hopscotch marked on the sidewalk. But it would be nice to know for sure. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!